I'm a police officer, you have the fact that the organization is a hierarchical organization, and you have that the commission of police put himself on duty. That created a problem. And you also have the evidence of um, Assistant Superintendent um, Mitchell Caesar, amongst others. So when he um, when he when he made the phone call. And this is something significant that he said also that you can take into consideration. Because Nora Inspector Narang Hans is really tight. Commissioner Prasad said that if Narang didn't grant it at least the two Khan brothers bill, he would have been breaching stand in order 74. But you took him to you took him to some you took him to stand in order seventy four, and um, I mean stand in order seventy four is clear in um, subsection two that there's certain complete prohibitions against some some persons who should not be granted bail, and in this case, if the and. You don't have to listen to anything that anybody, any other opinions, even the legal advisor, when you, you're considering <coughs> Commissioner Passat conduct. You just have to listen to what Commissioner Passat told you and said publicly. Commissioner Passat said that the conduct in this case amounted to treason. That is what his belief was as an experienced investigator an experienced police officer. If he believed that the, the conduct in this case amounted to treason, subsection two of, of standing order 74 says there's a complete prohibition to grant bail in these circumstances. So his, his instructions to, to, um, to um, Narayan was improper, and it also, um, was done simply because of his relationship, his relationship to Imran Khan. Even contacting Imran Khan. I mean, in other, in other jurisdictions, quite frankly, a commissioner of police who is on leave and who knows somebody very well, and that's why we dealt with the issue of conflict of interest perceived versus actual. Had he done that on, in any other jurisdiction, he would have been arrested for obstructing justice. He couldn't do that. He, he could not do that. If he's close, if he's connected to a person, a personal friend, he could not call a police station and get information from the investigator to ferry to the person whose, whose brother was at the station, which is what he did. And, and you, you have to, in our submission, deal with situations like that quite seriously. Because the other side, the other side, and it may follow again, they try to minimize this conduct. But from where you're sitting, you're dealing with public perception of policing. And you're dealing with the administration of justice. That's what you're dealing with. Public perception and the administration of justice. People must know that when there's an offense that is reported to the police, somebody mustn't have a friend in high place that could call and derail the investigation. And that's what you had in this case. The commissioner involved himself, and because he involved himself in this case and insulated himself in this case, there became tunnel vision. And so you heard Justice Chang say, well, from the beginning, um, the police said there was no evidence and there was no credibility to kill that story. The first thing is the police don't even assess the credibility of a story during um, an investigation. And you heard Justice Singh said that. The, 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 the assessment is the sufficiency of the evidence. It's not to determine who is credible and who isn't. That's done through cross-examinations. It's, it's not done by the police.
Another problem that puts uh, Commissioner Prasad in, at, at risk, and at risk where you're concerned, and shows that he wasn't only acting as a commissioner of police, but he was acting in his personal capacity that was problematic, is this is what he said to you. He said that he guaranteed to um, Inspector Narayan, he guaranteed this person showing up in court or showing up to the police. And what that means, he put himself in, a, in the place of a surety. That's not the role of a police commissioner. No police officer can do that, even for family members. In our jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction, a police officer cannot put themselves in the role of a surety. And that's why in our jurisdiction, a police officer can't be a surety uh, for somebody who is arrested, even if it's a family member. It puts them in conflict with their duty as a police officer. And that, that, that is a, that's a situation that you have here. You will recall um, the question and answers of the Commission of Police as to why he didn't review the file. I think you will have to seriously think about his conduct and competence as a commissioner. And I'll say this to you with the greatest of respect. This commissioner of police, because he's on the verge of retirement in April, he may feel that he no longer needs the public confidence. And that is why he conducted himself that way in respect to um, Imran Khan's and Nizam Khan matter. And that is why he conducted himself in that, in the same way before you and in the your preparation for this commission of inquiry. You've, you've repeatedly sat from the bench and spoke about making your request, your letter request in the complete investigative file in this matter. And numerous times you sat where you were and you were blindsided. You were blindsided by statements and other documents being presented by counsel that was not in your hands when they were put to the witnesses. That could not be fair to you as a commissioner. And obviously, the commissioner of police felt that he, had, he did not have to respect your instructions. And you should, you should take that as, you should, you, should you should use that as well when you're assessing this credibility. The issue of April 21st, where the Commission of Police made a public statement in respect to Travis Chase and HGP TV nightly news, he was in full police uniform and he was standing next to the Minister of Public Security. And he made public statements with respect to Travis Chase that were deceitful, that were uh, riddled with lies. He came before you and he said, he denied that he was willfully blind. He denied that he lied. He said, oh, I simply did not know that the police had this DVD. You have to determine whether or not you believe that. And if you believe that, whether this commissioner of police was incompetent or failed to exercise the due diligence that he should have as a prudent professional, when he was reviewing this file. Because had, had he done a 360 review, which a prudent commissioner should have done, he would have known that Travis Chase did an interview with Gillard, and that that interview was there with a memorandum for whoever received the file review. review. And so we say that um, in light of those circumstances, it's either, it's either he committed deceit or he was grossly negligent which led to dereliction of duty. And um, you can so find person to your mandate. You've heard evidence with respect to um, the conduct of um, Senior Superintendent Blanham. And um, the Assistant Commissioner said that um, Blanham misled him. 
and Blanham misled him and he was disappointed, but you've also received a statement from Mr. Blanham. But we say in that case, it, it puts you in a difficult position, but an interesting position as a judge because you simply have to determine the credibility of the two of them and um, whose evidence you're more likely to believe. And I think you can do that by also assessing their conduct before you, including how they responded to your questions. Whether they, and I'm going to use your word, whether they danced around your questions or whether they were forthright in answering your questions. I think, I think you, you uh, I think, uh, Mr. Commissioner, the conflict of interest that arose in the relationship between Mr. Khan and uh, Mr. Imran Khan and the Commissioner um, seriously um, is prejudicial to any good discipline in the Guyana Police Force. And it also uh, brings the administration of justice in disrepute. And, and it's something that you have to deal with um, in your capacity as, as a commissioner pursuant to uh, your mandate by the president. There's, a, there's an issue with respect to Assistant Commissioner Ram Narayan on the same subject matter, because Assistant Commissioner Ram Narayan knew of the relationship between these two persons, but didn't report it to the permanent secretary or the minister of uh, public security. And um, he is given an explanation and you're gonna have to determine whether you accept the explanation or whether his conduct is something